everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and it is Pillow Chat Day and I am super excited. I've got lots to discuss and part of it is Power Zone Challenge. So it started this week, officially started Monday, but if you are a subscriber of the Power Zone Challenge, it has a fee. I'll talk about the fee in a second, but if you're subscribed to it, you get the challenges early. So because of how my migraine days fall, I've talked all about migraine issues, but because of how my migraine days fall, I needed to do my first ride over the weekend. Oh, there's a little hummingbird. <laughs> I'm like right by these big windows. So if you ever see my eye like going somewhere else, it's because somebody's walking by or a car's driving by, or in this case, a little hummingbird. So I'm just like, ooh, hummingbird. <laughs> anyway, I'm going back to it. Because of how my migraine medicine falls, it's an every other day thing. I want to ride every other day on those migraine medicine days. And because of how those days fell this week, I needed the challenge early. And so I decided to just commit to signing up for it. And I did. I got my first ride done over the weekend and then my second ride done Monday. And then I will take my third ride Wednesday. And that gives me one buffer day. If I take the first ride over the weekend in this week's setup, that gives me Friday as a buffer day to, if you know, if something goes wrong one of the other days or I don't get to my ride, that gives me one extra day. And I was feeling like, Okay, if I wait, don't pay the subscription fee and take my first ride Monday, my second ride Wednesday, my third ride Friday, that gives me no room to mess up. It doesn't give me room to have a migraine day and miss a day or anything. So I really wanted that extra built in just in case day because my migraines have been all over the place. But I'm thankful and happy to report I have been migraine free for one entire week as of today. This is day eight. So thankfully, hopefully, um, I won't have as much problems now that I'm on a different schedule. Now that I'm on a different cardio schedule, I think that's going to help a little bit. Just at this point, everything, every little thing is setting me off. And just that little bit of cardio, I think was causing a problem some days. So I just didn't want to risk it. I'm taking my migraine medicine every other day. And on that day I take the medicine, I do my cardio and it worked fine that way. I didn't have any sort of issues. I am under the weather because I have a cold. So especially when something else is going haywire, I have to be super duper careful. I'm, I'm like on all the regimens. I'm doing good sleep. I'm doing good eating. I'm making sure I'm staying hydrated. I'm getting enough protein. I'm avoiding the major triggers for me. I'm trying to relieve stress, like all the things. I'm doing everything that I can do down the checklist and trying to prevent getting them. And that's kind of what you do. If you're a chronic migraine sufferer, you do everything. Like if they said chopping off your leg would cure me of migraines, I would chop off my leg in like one second. Basically, I would do anything to get rid of them. So I'm cutting out all cheese. Some cheeses can set me off and some cheeses are fine, but I'm just having mozzarella. Like that's the only one. I'm like, I've eaten enough mozzarella to know that it's not mozzarella causing issues, but there have been days I've eaten other cheeses like on charcuterie boards and stuff and gotten sick those days. So it could be the cheese, it could be nothing, but I'm just taking every precaution at this point, just, just to be safe. But that's my main excitement is I am two rides into the first week of Power Zone and I cannot wait to take my next one tomorrow. It will be great. And then um, the Power Zone thing, I signed up for three rides, but there's a bonus thing where you can take a 30 minute ride or do any other 30 minute class. I think for that bonus thing, I'll try to do a 30 minute bar class. I haven't done, I don't think I've done any 30 minute bar classes. I think I've only stuck to 20s and then stacked it with like a 10 minute strength class or 10 minute core or something else. I know there's a lot of 30 minute classes, so I thought I would build those in every week and just take a longer one. And at this point, I'm not doing any exercise on those off days right now just to like just to make sure that the cardio is okay and I will pick back up on the bar and strength training and stuff next week and if it's okay on those off migraine medicine days like the every other in-between day I will be okay if it causes issues on those in-between days the days I don't take the medicine um, I will switch it to doing it on the same day just like doing two workouts or doing the whole thing back to back I'll see how it stacks up but Right now, I'm just taking it easy, making sure that nothing's gonna set me off, and then next week I will jump into incorporating in more strength and the bar again. I've not taken bar um, since doing the switch over, and it's been sad. <laughs> I really, really like the bar classes, so I really wanna incorporate those back in, but I'm just taking it super slow. I just don't wanna set myself off. But anyway, that's all the, like, the main excitement going on. I've got a couple of things on my list here, and I did take a thumbnail with some chips. <laughs> I did buy the individual bags of chips and I bought individual bags of chips here and there for like kid stuff like party things and volunteering to bring things to her class or signing up for kids snacks for softball and that kind of thing but I don't buy those kind of things just for like in the house ready to eat snacks 
I always buy the big bag and portion it out. I'm on the side, it's more expensive, it's more wasteful, you know, you have a lot more packaging waste and it's just more expensive overall. And I was on the mindset of, that's just too expensive and I refuse to do it. And Johnny like gave me some real life talk and he's like, it might be wasteful, it might cost more, but per serving, it's cheaper. Cause like how many servings is a big bag of chips? It's like, you know, like two, three, maybe. Well, that bag of chips is supposed to be like 12 servings or something ridiculous. And if you buy the individual bags, you're not going to go to the pantry and pick out like three of those individual bags, but it's easy to pick out three servings out of a big bag. So if you're talking strictly per serving cost, the little individual bags are way, way cheaper. Cause you know, if you're getting, and this is the one I took in the thumbnail, if you're getting 20 bags of chips for like eight bucks or whatever, that's way, way cheaper than buying a big bag of chips for four bucks and it being like two servings. It's way cheaper to buy the individual bags and then you're already portion control. You don't have to worry about overindulging because you're not gonna go back to the pantry two and three and four times to get more bags of chips. You know, you'll eat your one bag, you're satisfied. I'm thinking psychologically, maybe you have the satisfaction of finishing the whole bag. Like I know it's only four chips, but you get to finish the whole bag and that's like, I don't know, satisfying in some way. I know like clean your plate, there's a psychological thing where people like to clean their plate. You know, we're ingrained to finish your food, don't waste food. So you finish whatever's on your plate usually. And I think it's kind of like the same psychological thing that if you finish the tiny bag of chips, it's satisfying. Whereas if you just eat a portion out of the big bag, it's not as satisfying in that way. Like you didn't finish it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just totally bull <laughs> but that's how I feel about it. So. As you can see by the thumbnail, I bought individual serving sizes of chips. We were supposed to bring snacks for Libby's softball game. It got rained out because there was a lot of rain and storm and stuff. And we had these little bags of chips because I bought them for the softball thing that we're no longer going to need. They're not making up the game. Um, and I was eating one and that's how this whole discussion came about. I was like, you know, this is so convenient, but it's expensive and wasteful. And Johnny's like, just buy the little bags. Like, Life's too short for you to like be super concerned about the price of the chip bags. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. We're buying the little bags of chips and they happen to be on sale this week where they were like a dollar off per big box thing. So I bought quite a few different ones. So now we have tons of variety, tons of little chip bags to choose from. The other ones were Lay's potato chips, which are the best. I just love any kind of potato chip thing, but especially like a really just good salty chip. and. I've been really good about like not going to the pantry every night and snacking on them. It just happens to be like when I really want a chip, I go and get it. And otherwise I'm not grabbing them just cause they're there. And that's what my other concern was. Like I'm not buying a whole lot of chips in general because of course like I'll eat half the bag, but it's that temptation that it's in the pantry. I know it's there. I'm gonna go grab it every day, but I'm sticking to just really trying to listen to my body. Still trying to use my fitness pal to like keep me on track for portion control and stuff but I haven't gone every night and grabbed the bag of chips. Um, so that's good. <laughs> Just because they're there doesn't mean I have to eat them. And that's been not as hard as I thought it would be. I really thought like going into using the MyFitnessPal, I thought it would be way harder to um, avoid snacks. It's like, it feels almost like riding a bicycle. Once you've done it a few times, it becomes easier each time and you just kind of pick up where you left off. That's how this MyFitnessPal thing has been. It was really eye-opening in the beginning. It was like, you know, I'm hungry because I'm used to eating this much and now I'm eating this much, things like that. But overall, it's been surprisingly easy and like days that I want to have a, like a cheat day or not really follow my calorie count, I'm super hungry those days, I just go with it. I just put whatever it is in the tracker. I'm over by like 300 calories or whatever. It's no big deal. I just pick up where I left off the next day. I don't know. I'm not using any of the like the shame or shoulds kind of thing with it. I'm just trying to listen to my body, trying to make better choices, but still enjoying the stuff I really want. Like one of the days I really wanted that bag of chips. So I had the little bag of chips and was satisfied and haven't gone back since to like get more chips just because they're in there. So that was like a big I don't know, eye-opening moment is like, I can buy the tiny bags. It's okay if it's wasteful. It's okay if it's more expensive that way. But that way I'm like safeguarding myself from eating the 10 gallons of chips. It's just something that I didn't give myself permission for, which is dumb. I should think it's, you know, for my health, for my well-being to not eat the whole bag of chips or the half bag of chips. But it wasn't until I talked to Johnny and he's like, why are you caring so much about this? Just buy the smaller bags. It's okay. It's fine. And then I was like, okay, like, yeah, I can give myself permission <laughs> to do this. Like, I don't know why it has to be like overthought too much in my head. Um, anyway, 
That's just one of those things. Going along with that, I've been following the MyFitnessPal. I have not weighed myself except to weigh Cloudlid. And it was like shortly after filming that last pillow chat. So it was the same weight. It was like 0.2 less. So basically the same. That's like a fluctuation of like me eating something. <laughs> like it could vary that much. But I haven't weighed since then. So I'll weigh myself again in like a week or two and see where I'm at. Oh yeah, I wrote on here. I subscribed to the Power Zone Challenge. I talked about that earlier. I just wanted to mention the price. I don't know the yearly price. It's like 80 bucks. And then if you pay per month, it's $8 a month. It's like $7.99. So I did end up doing just just the month to month because I'm not going to be on it all year. I'm going to do it for the six weeks that I have now, which is me paying two subscriptions. And then there's like a month break in between. I don't think I'm going to do any of the older challenges. So when you're subscribed, you can take older challenges and things like that. So I don't know if I'm going to do that in between, but if I end up liking it, I'll just sign up for the yearly thing. I add it to our budget under um, fitness and gym, like that kind of thing. When I sign up for the mom's group, which I'm not signed up for right now because of all the migraine things. I pay for that and then I also pay the Peloton subscription. So we have a line item in our budget for gym and fitness. I just stuck that $8 fee in that category. And going into that, I'm not signed up for the mom's group. I've just been having too many issues. I don't wanna work out in the morning. So the mom's group's out for me for a while. I'm gonna really try to do it in the summer if my migraines are under control because I do like the social aspect of it. I definitely feel like less social and more isolated not being in the mom's group. I still talk to people People too but it's not the same as like seeing them multiple days a week and hanging out with them and our kids getting to play together so I'm missing that aspect of it for sure but I really like working out by myself like that's what I really noticed I really enjoy my Peloton workouts I really like riding the bike and doing all the strength training and things but I don't really enjoy the working out in front of other people part of it like it's just I want to not be self-conscious about it. And I feel self-conscious when I'm doing it in front of other people. That part of it I don't like, and I was paying that membership plus the Peloton membership, and that's a lot of money every month. I decided to take a break from it just because everything's going on and I couldn't really go. Like that was part of it. I'm sad about it, but not from a money standpoint. <laughs> like I'm glad that we're saving that little bit of money every month. And I'll try to do it again in the summer when both kids are home. They can go hang out with their friends and do the fun things and it gets me out of the house with them some too. It's like a built-in excuse for us to go to that and be social and not just stay home in our pajamas all day. And last thing on here, the actual Power Zone challenges were both 45 minute rides. The first one was really rough. Like I'm not gonna lie, I'm used to like 20 and 30 minute rides and adding that extra time on making it a 45 minute ride was tough. I did not follow the cues hardly at all. First of all, my zones I think are wrong because zone three is kind of tough for me, at least right now, because I'm out of practice and out of shape a little bit. Um, so I didn't really do much of the zone three call outs. It was mainly just staying in zone two and zone three and going back and forth with those. And then the second ride I took, I followed the cues. Like I really, really tried to stay in the right zone and it was tougher, but I didn't um, pedal fast. That's the thing. I bump up the resistance and pedal. I was like cadence of 70 to 80s for the most part. There was very few times I went into the 90s or 100s as far as the cadence goes. Um, I just really tried to follow the cues and up the resistance. So it was really more like using your muscles versus using your endurance. <laughs> and that's okay for me. I don't really care. I'm not really trying to perform for anything. I don't have marathons coming up. These people are like super hardcore people and I'm just not at that level right now but I was super happy my first ride I got 11 something miles and then the second ride I got right at even 12. I was like 30 seconds away from the end and I was like I can get to 12 miles so I was pumping a little bit faster and got to the 12 miles exactly right on and um, I was really happy with that I didn't kill myself trying to get the 12 miles but I was close enough that I'm like oh if I just pedal a little bit faster I can get it and I did so I was super happy about that and I'm really excited for ride three coming up tomorrow. Super excited to get it done. And I feel like I'm back in it. Anytime I get like eight miles and up on the bike, I definitely get that hit of endorphins and the happy-go-lucky feelings. So I really enjoyed both rides. By the end, I was like, heck yeah, I did it. I'm back in the game and felt great, felt on top of the world. So definitely recommend Power Zone Pack if you're interested. It is fun. You can't sign up after a certain date, so I don't think you can sign up for this one, but definitely you can keep your eye on it. You can subscribe to their newsletter and it lets you know when new ones are coming up and 
it's been fun. I really, really like the camaraderie of it. Like you're taking the same ride as a lot of people. So there's always easily like a hundred people on the ride. So that's fun that you get high fives and stuff for these rides. Whereas if you're taking on-demand classes, there might not be people actually in the class with you, especially if you pick like older ones. There'll be like maybe one or two people. It's nice to have tons of people in the ride with you high-fiving. That part of it's really fun. So I like that. And I think that's all. That's all that's on my list. I'm really happy to be finding something that's working for now, like fingers crossed that this stays the pattern. I'm one week free of migraines and that's been a really long time since I could say that. It's been like, I've been almost at a week and then I get another one or another cluster of them. And yeah, I'm just really trying to do all the right things and avoid getting more. So that's all I have for you guys today. It's just uh, power zone, that's it. That's all I did because of switching everything around. I'm definitely feeling like I could do the strength so we'll see. I do have a cold. I hope you guys don't notice how nasally I sound, at least to myself, I sound super nasally, but I did my power zone class last night with a cold. I did end up flipping the bike around, which I'll show you real quick. I'll cut to a little picture. I flipped the bike around so that I could have the window ledge because I needed my box of tissues and I used so many tissues. It was ridiculous, but my nose will run while I'm exercising just to begin with. So that was just extra pleasant because I already have a runny nose. <laughs> I just used lots of tissues, but I needed that window sill back. That's all I got for you guys today. I would love to know how your exercise and health is going. If you care to share in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week for a pillow chat talking about week two of Power Zone. And I'm just, I'm glad that I did it. I felt like a crazy person signing up for it, but I'm just really proud of myself for doing it and then paying the subscription so I make sure I get all my three rides in this week. Yeah, I'm just enjoying it. Hopefully that part of it keeps up. I'm just glad I'm getting miles in finally, like 12 miles. I'm like, yes, I got 12 miles. Finally, I'm hitting those double digit miles again and it feels great and glad to be back in it. Hope you guys are also doing really well. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow me along. I've got a Peloton playlist down below. I've got my Peloton coupon code down below if you want to get one of the big pieces of Peloton equipment. That's all I got for you guys. So I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Bye.